Hey everyone, my name's Rui and we are back. This is going to be week four of the PGLNU Cup. And we've been on a bit of a tear. We've been having a lot of fun with this team. We are currently three and O with a plus 10 differential and we are up against the Salt Lake City Swampers, if I'm not mistaken, who also just happened to be three and O with a plus 10 differential. It's going to be our most difficult matchup yet. I think they had the best team coming out of the draft and they're just going to be really difficult to deal with. But we're here, I think we can do this. I think the team we put together matches up pretty darn well well or at least as well as we can so uh, let's just see i actually don't generally do this because i don't usually have like a layout or anything with the sprites on it but i did want to try and like predict the six that he would bring and honestly just his top few um picks would be the most obvious it's incineroar hariyama incineroar jellicent lycanroc and mesprit would be the ones that i'm most um afraid of the ones that i think he would be most likely to bring however i could absolutely see the toga tomorrow because he knows i have the vikavolt toga tomorrow can stop me in my tracks so can pilus wine for that matter but um he does know about my superpowering malamar shtick so he might be a little bit more hesitant to bring the pilus wine or the mill tank for that matter but uh, I don't see how he doesn't bring the Mespert and the Jellicent. Both of them I ha I see just coming right away. The Alolan Gizekitor might be a little bit of that um, last minute like addition subtraction. I'm not too too sure. Okay, here we go. We have the Incineroar, Togedomaru, Alolan, Alolan Executor, Miltank, Hariyama, and Jellicent. So we got most of it right. Does not bring the Lycanroc, which means that my team does not have to worry about outspeeding certain things. No Mesprit, no Mesprit is absolutely insane. That actually opens the door quite a bit for my Scarfed Malamar. Now, no doubt he's gonna have something on his team that is also Scarfed. Um, Togedomaru can U-turn, uh, the Incineroar can U-turn, but I do have the Scarf, so I don't know. He might expect the Scarf, which would be really, really scary to be completely honest, but um, my immediate thinking is that he wouldn't want to bring in the Incineroar too, too often anyway, because that's going to give me an attack raise with the contrary. And the Incineroar would have to be Scarf to be able to effectively take on my Malamar. But as soon as this Jellicent goes down, we kind of have a little bit of a field day. Now, I really expected the Mesprit to come. That's honestly pretty surprising. I think I can honestly... Hmm. What? Okay. I honestly kind of feel like I can lead with the Toxicroak. I'm trying to think of what he would lead with. I'm going to lead with the Toxicroak. Yeah. So, I don't... Like, 0% of me wants to just do the standard, like, Gigalith Rocks lead. And... I kind of feel like he'd be the type that would try to counter that with the Jellicent lead, but I would have to imagine his lead's either going to be the Jellicent or the Alolan Executor. That would have to be my guess. I don't really know what else he would lead with. Um, yeah, I'm not in too sure at all. Maybe the to no, Toga tomorrow you'd want to keep in the back. Yeah, those are really my only two um, options that I really have in mind here. Maybe Mill Tank just for the... Um, Rocks lead. The, the Togedomaru does end up leading as I bring out the the Toxicroak here. Huh. What does he do if I just go for the... What does he do if I just go for the Drain Punch right off the bat? I mean, obvious play would be to go into the Jellicent. I could knock off in the situation. Definitely wouldn't go into the Olin Executor. That's pretty much a no-no. The Mill Tank is, is also a no-no. Hariyama, I don't feel like he would want to get damaged too early. And Incineroar, he could take a hit with it, but yeah, I'm just going to click knock off here. I'm just going to click knock off here. I mean, I feel like Jellicent would be one of his only plays in this situation. I'm not... I'm not too sure. I don't want to be too confident in that prediction too, too early, but at, at the same time, I don't know what his play is because, uh, like I said, this Toxicro just takes on his team pretty darn well. Um, overall, that poison and fighting coverage does deal with a whole bunch of his team. If he brings in that Hariyama just to take some hits, that would be an insane play. It goes for the Zen headbutt. Okay. Okay, that is really bad. I honest to God did not know that Toga Tomorrow got Zen head, but that is 100% true. I honest to God did not know that. 
So, okay. Okay, fair enough. We go down pretty darn early. We don't have any information because that is a quad effective move. I think the play might just be to go into the Gigalith right away. Go try to set up the rocks. I don't think he has removal, does he? What is his removal here? Yeah, I'm not sure if he has any removal. I'd have to look when I can take a look at his team again. Um, and I'm going to write, and I, I should write down his team, but I'm going to write down his team when I do get the chance. Togedemaru. And what was the last Mon? Miltank, right? Executor, Hariyama. Incineroar, Jellicent. Yeah, okay. I have his team written down. So yeah, no removal, I don't think. I, I just talked about how uh, how I shouldn't go for the, just that rock lead, and here I am. But he definitely could stay in. Definitely could, but I wouldn't imagine he would. Um, if he does try to, like, nuzzle me or something, thunder wave me, that would be unfortunate. Um... I am really defensive, so I'm not quite, quite sure what he would be inclined to do in this situation. I'm also really curious, so I would not be surprised at all if he has some sort of Scarfer on his team, but I'd have to think about what it was. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, the Togedemaru is the most likely to be Scarfed. No, okay, so U-turn. That is incredible information to know this early on, because um, that does guarantee that my Malamar will outspeed, and it eliminates a pretty darn likely uh a pretty darn likely scarf option and it's probably the most scary scarf option well incineroar is pretty scary to be fair to be fair so let me see here i don't have superpower on this thing this is not really an offensively built Harry, Hariyama, um, Gigalith at all, but I'm just going to go for the Toxic. He's probably going to either Toxic or get up his own rocks. Um, rocks don't hurt my team too, too badly. They don't hurt my team too, too badly. And actually, I should write down Togedemaru, KO's, what's that thing called? Um, Toxicroak with Zen Headbutt. And you know what? I, I'm going to write down my own team just because I... Toxicroak. Just because uh, I'm not that great at remembering things. Gigalith. And I built this team like a couple days ago at this point. Dougie. Man, losing Toxicroak this early was really, really bad. It's really not good. However, okay, so this would give me, theoretically, a free opportunity to switch into the Malamar. However, I don't want to get Toxic myself, so that doesn't seem like a thing that I, I particularly want to do this early on. Vicavolt. And Malamar. Oh, and the Leafeon, of course, okay. Okay, so I really should have gone with that Leaf Young lead. I was thinking I should, but I really didn't. And I, yeah, okay. Okay, so part of me wants to go into the Vika Vault right now and go for the HP ground, expecting the Togedemaru to come in. But I'm not sure if he would let himself be baited like that. I'm not sure if he would let himself be baited like that. But at the same time, oh, so this Vicaval also has Charty Berry just to take on the Lycan Rock, which is insane to me now. Um, yeah, I think that should be the play. Because realistically, my Vicavolt, my Vicavolt doesn't do as much for me, I don't think. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, okay. It gets toxic, that's fair. I don't know, my Vicavolt really doesn't do uh, the most for me yet, but I guess we'll see. Now, there's the whole Sandstorm thing going on. 
I don't think that the, that the Vicavolt is the most important thing on my team right now. Uh, not having the Mesper and not really needing this to take it on really does help quite a bit. If he does have the Rock Slide, that would be probably best case scenario. But I feel like just going for that Hidden Power Ground. Let me see if he takes that bait. Would he take that bait? I'm not too sure what he's thinking right now. I mean, he could be just thinking that I'm bad and then I left in my Toxicroak in on a very easy Zen Headbutt user. But again, I genuinely did not know. Genuinely honestly, I did not know. That is crazy to me. But at the same time, um, if I were him, yeah, I would be thinking just the strongest of Thunderbolts coming in or Bug Buzzes. Um, and realistically, this thing does help me out quite a bit against the against the um, Alolan Executor as well, but he has to be thinking about goes for the withdrawal. Does the token tomorrow come in? I forget. I believe that's token tomorrow. Okay. Okay. I don't think that this was air ballooned. It is not. Is this focus ash? Oh, it doesn't matter because of the rocks. Okay. We take it out pretty darn early on. Hidden power ground. He knows my hidden power, but it doesn't matter because this thing can take on the rest of his team. I mean, Incineroar would be the obvious switch in right now. The really obvious switch in right now. It doesn't know my item because of the Charty Barrier, though. It could be Fearing Scarf. Who the heck knows? I guess we'll see. Um, I could really be any item right now, which is uh, fun, I guess. But yeah, this thing doesn't do much for me in the long run, I guess. I did speed creep in Alolan Executor, and realistically, it's kind of my bad for not speed creeping Hariyama, or or I really should have sped crept um, Incineroar. But realistically, you'd run speed on Incineroar, so maybe it's not, that's not the worst thing in the world. This thing doesn't outspeed anything, really. Except the Alolan Executor, if it doesn't have any investment. However, the Executor could possibly be um, Trick Room. It would seem the, mo the most likely in the situation. So I guess we'll have to see about that, but getting rid of that token tomorrow is pretty huge. It's pretty huge. But yeah, this big ball really doesn't do anything anymore, like at all, because I can't switch it out in this situation. And he has to know that. So what it literally can bring in anything and it'll take me out at this point. The only thing he would have to be fearing right now would be some kind of a um would be some kind of a scarf set or something like that. In comes the Incineroar. Now, is it worth switching out? Is it worth switching out? This thing can switch in once again, and it can take on the Executor. If the Executor sets up a Trick Room, then this thing becomes valuable, which is interesting. But I kind of want to go just into Gigalith. I kind of want to go into Gigalith and just... Well, okay, if I did go into Gigalith, then realistically I would double out because I'm not intimidated and I resist most things he could go for, except for maybe low kick, I guess. Hmm. Realistically, I would double out, expecting the gels, and I'd probably double out into... Ooh, Leafeon, maybe? I'm not sure what I'd double out into. How many turns of sand are left? This is the final turn of sand. This is the final turn of sand. I should just let this thing go, right? But does it does this do anything for me? I don't think it does. Yeah, realistically, just gonna flare blitz me, and it's just gonna be it. Now I could, I could go into. No, that's not a good idea at all. But yeah, I'm just gonna let him take this thing out. Ironically enough, this thing, um, oh, I outspeed, okay. That's kind of nuts. So this thing has to be a very, very slow trick room set. There goes my charty bearing. Oh dear. So that actually really opens the door. Okay, wait, wait, let me think this through. That actually really opens the door for my 
for my Malamar, right? So I bring in Malamar, right? And knowing that he's this slow, because again, I was really fearing Scarf, but knowing that this thing is this slow, that gives me the freest of knockoffs as his Jellicent comes in, and then that either does does enough where I can knock off again, or I can double out into the Gigalith and kind of reset this whole situation. Yeah, that is 100% my play. That is 100% my play. And then, once Jellicent is gone, or at the, or at the very least, um, down to a level where I can deal with it, then, at that point, my Malamar can just sweep. Now, if he stays in and U-turns, then I am genuinely... That's, that, that might be a loss right there, in honesty. That might be a loss right there, to be completely honest. But this is a play that I have to make, in all honesty. Man, no, it's probably a mistake. I could have just gone into the Gigalith. He probably has low kick, though, in all fairness. He probably has low kick. But yeah, this thing is a very, very slow Incineroar. Actually, wait, this has to be a negative speed Incineroar. This has to be a negative speed Incineroar. That's kind of wild. What was he trying to underspeed there? With negative speed? He's thinking. He's really, really considering this. I do. Oh, that's. That might be the game. Assault vest. Leech life. Even worse. That might just be the game. I risked it. I, see, I played. I played really risky early on, and, uh. I think he knew that I was willing to take that risk. And that's a huge old yikes. So if I go into... Okay, I'm thinking of going into Doug Trio here, right? If I go into the Doug Trio... Then... If I go into the Doug Trio... Then I can just start dealing damage to pretty much anything on his team. If the executor comes in, that'll be super unfortunate. <sighs> okay, so this game isn't unwinnable right now, but that was genuinely really bad. I uh, shouldn't have done that. I should have played this safer. Part of me just wants to go for the Aerial Ace now and avoid... I could double. Would doubling do anything for me? No, I'm, I'm just gonna Earthquake. That was an incredibly unfortunate play that I just made. I don't think there's any way. This thing's a Sol Vested, but I don't think there's any way that this thing could take an Earthquake reasonably. I am an Adamant, uh, Doug Trio. I don't know if that means anything. Against... This is Incineroar. This thing comes in. This thing's probably really defensive, too. Can this two hit? That's a decent amount of HP to be at, especially after the poison damage. Yeah, that's a two hit. Okay, that's good. Leftovers, but then poison. It's gonna be a roll. But at this point, I can't really afford not to go for another earthquake here. I cannot afford not to go for an earthquake in this situation. If this roll doesn't go my way, then ah, uh, that's an what? That's a very, very low roll. That's that's gonna be GG. Oh, we take it. That's bananas. Okay, so this thing is not at all offensively invested. This thing is not at all offensively invested. I'm just gonna iron head here. Um. That's, that's nuts. Like, I don't know. Just judging based off of the damage that I saw, that was a roll, and I ended up on the wrong side of it. That is really bad. Okay, so 
this would invite in the Alolan Executor. This, this might also invite in the Jellicent. But uh, the Jellicent, I can Dark EMZ. The Executor, I can... I can Aerial Ace, but it's going to set up a Trick Room. But if it does that, then I can go into the Gigalith, maybe? No, realistically, I'd go into the uh, Leafeon. Maybe. Unless he's feeling spicy and he goes for the Dragon move. Um... I mean, realistically, Hariyama's a decent play here. Hariyama kind of just wins here. Mistakes were absolutely made. Mistakes were absolutely made. If I'd, if I'd gone for that superpower, I think I might win the game. Well, yeah, he had enough resources. There was no reason for me to do that because all I had to do, even if I did superpower, take out the Incineroar. But Incineroar was his... I mean, Incineroar felt like a win condition there. I mean, realistically, a, a Executor and or Hariyama was a win condition as well. Yeah. I mean, Incineroar was probably like... <sighs> yeah, no. Incineroar couldn't do much on its own, but in Executor... Executor and Hariyama can do a lot on their own. So yeah, no, it makes sense. That's That's a fair play. That is a totally, totally fair play. In comes the Hariyama. I guess I just aerial ace it. Will I do more with uh, with Dark EMZ? Let's see. Hariyama. Okay, so here's the thing. Earthquake actually does more to a Hariyama. Ironhead does almost as much, but uh, Ironhead can flinch. Playing to a flinch wouldn't be that bad, and and Dark AMZ doesn't do anything in this situation, yeah. At this point, might as well just play for a flinch. Let's see. Oh, goes for the bullet punch. Nah, that's fine, that's fine. However, unless this thing gets burned, right? Yeah, this thing gets burned. Yeah, that's going to be GG. That's 100% GG right there. I was going to say, if I could possibly set up any type of a... of a Swords Dance in the situation, then maybe I could make it out of this one. At least this interaction, but... Uh, with the Bullet Punch, that pretty much seals it. That Bullet Punch pretty much seals it. I mean, it's worth setting up either way. Let's see. Let's see if he thinks I have any leafy on tags here, but no. Um, I made a huge, huge risk, and it absolutely 100% did not pay off. And 4-0 uh, is going to be a pretty, pretty rough loss in the situation, but um, I do still like my team. I don't think that I should be taking the kinds of risks that I have been taking. Um, they've been working out for me in the past, but... Um, yeah, I shouldn't have, I, I straight up should not have uh, tried out those things. If he goes for the close combat, then we probably take one. My defense is really, really solid. But uh, probably, oof. I do not take one even a little bit, but that's fine. And we've already lost this match. Um, yeah, no, he, he, he played this well. He knew, he knew that he had other ways of beating me even after the, even after the Incineroar went down. And I just made a really unnecessary risk there. I took a really unnecessary risk. Man, that's a brutal way to go three and one. But I mean, to be fair, uh, my game last week was a really, really brutal way to uh, lose a match the other way. So it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We'll bounce back. We'll bounce back. Gigalith is still really strong. Maybe at minus one, he can get off an Earthquake. That'll take this thing out after Sandstorm and burn damage. But um, who knows if we'll take a close combat. We are more specially defensive than physically... Excuse me, than physically defensive. So it's not the likeliest thing in the world. But um, I guess we'll see. No, we don't take that either. So yeah, GG to him. Uh... So yeah, GG to him. That was really, really well played. And like I said, I just 
I took a risk where I didn't have to. Uh, he already knew that I was into kind of making those nuts predictions that I really have no business doing. So that'll be it for this week. Well, either way, that was a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back next week with more PGL and U Cup. We will come back from this loss. I really, really want to make a playoff run in this league. So join me for that. And very, very soon, as in next week, we will have PGBL content. So please, please stay tuned for that. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching once again. And I'll be once again out.